In this video, we're going to consider spectroscopy in a magnetic field. So far, we looked at absorption and emission spectra of electronic transitions, and this was in the absence of magnetic field. And when we did this, we found that some quantum numbers, uh, some states de uh, described by some quantum numbers, were actually degenerate. For example, if we looked at, for instance, let's consider the total angular momentum J, and we said that if we consider this the z-axis here, we can have j be spatially quantized and say j is equal to 1. We can have j spatially quantized where here j is equal to, uh, for example, plus 1, 0, and minus 1. Sorry, this would be m sub j equal plus 1, 0, and minus 1. And we said if we looked at the energy levels here, and this would be energy going up this way, the values for m sub j equal plus 1, 0, and minus 1. All of these energy levels are the same energy. What we will find in the presence of a magnetic field that these energy levels are no longer degenerate. They have different energies. So why would that be? Well, let's take an electron here. The electron is charged. If we consider the total angular momentum as arising from some spin, if you spin some mass, you'll get an angular momentum. And if that mass that you're spinning is charged, then that spinning charge generates a magnetic field. So the logic here is the spinning charge gives rise to a magnetic field. That's in fact how one generates electromagnets, spins charges around in a circle and you generate a magnetic field. And the magnetic field can be described as a magnetic dipole. And the magnetic dipole is aligned with the angular momentum vector j. Or it can actually be aligned depending upon the size of, or the sign of the charge that you're spinning. It can be aligned with it or against it. But the idea is it lines up this way. Now, what would, so these in the elect, or in the atom, these electrons are spinning around. They have, they're generating magnetic fields. They can be considered not only units of angular momentum, but also little magnetic dipoles. Now, what would happen if you had these uh, little magnetic dipoles and you applied some magnetic field this way? We'll define this magnetic field in a little detail later. Well, remember that the magnetic dipoles are aligned with the angular momentum vector and since the angular momentum vector be quantized in space so too can the magnetic dipole so let's use mu for the magnetic dipole it could be aligned this way or aligned this way or aligned this way so consider these as little magnets each one of them corresponds to an m sub j a different value of m sub j you have a total value of 1. This would be mcj equals, say, plus 1, 0, and minus 1. So one would expect if this, just consider this as just uh, one magnet here, another magnet here, the alignment of the two magnets will govern its energy. So something that's aligned with the external magnetic field might be at one energy. And as you rotate this magnet, then the energy that you, that this small magnet has relative to the large magnetic field will change as you rotate that. So spatial quantization of angular momentum leads to spatial quantization of these magnetic dipoles. And then when you have a external magnetic field, the energy of each one of these magnetic dipoles will be different. So that, in a nutshell, and very qualitatively, is why the degeneracy of energy levels is removed when you have the system in a magnetic field. Let's uh, go on and talk about some definitions and units. There's a name for the effect that when you put a degenerate energy levels in a magnetic field and they split, that's called the Zeeman effect, splitting of energy levels in the presence of magnetic field. Magnetic field is measured in units of Tesla, that's the SI unit of magnetic field, or if the uh, older unit is Gauss, and there's 10 to the fourth Gauss per Tesla. And a third useful quantity here is called the Bohr magneton. So as we said, depending upon how the magnetic dipoles align with the external magnetic field, you have a different energy. So you have to have some conversion between magnetic field energy, and that's what the Bohr magneton is. It has units of joule per magnetic field, or SI units, joule per Tesla. 
Okay, so we have a certain magnetic field. This is proportionality constant with a few other factors that will give you change the Tesla into Joule. So that's spectroscopy in a magnetic field. One possible source of confusion for these units of Tesla. Uh, Tesla actually has two meanings here. One is the car, the Tesla the car, that's an electric car. The other is Tesla the inventor. And in fact, the unit of magnetic field was named after Tesla. So don't confuse when we say Tesla, don't confuse the car with the inventor. It was the inventor for which the magnetic field unit was named after, not the car.